Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. Today I have a very special guest, the one, the only, Mark Wade. How are you, mate? Good evening, sir. Doing okay. What kind of day has it been so far? It has been a long and uh, arduous day <laughs> here in central London. And uh, also the weather has been somewhat against us of late in the UK. So we've been going through some crazy storms at the time that we record this. How about yourself? Uh, good, actually. Uh, you know, fairly relaxing, beautiful weather outside. Going to go for a walk after this. I live six blocks from the beach, which is nice, but I'm Irish, so I can't go because I'll burst in a flame. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's, you it's me, nice. You and me walk. both, brother. Yeah, I know yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. what that feels like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's nothing like um, nothing like being irradiated by the uh, by the beautiful weather. But it seems to me not much of a downside. No. So, so Mark, um, I'm here to talk to you uh, for this edition of of Forbidden Planet TV about your upcoming Batman Superman World's Finest, something that we're very excited about. And the viewers can buy from the links attached to our conversation. So what can you tell me about it, mate? It's, first of all, I can tell you it's a dream project. It's the dream project. Yeah. This was probably my favorite comic growing up is, is Batman and Superman World's Finest back in the day. And I, you know, not only is it a chance to write Superman, which is, you know, the number one goal, but also a chance to write Batman for some, you know, protracted length where he's not just a member of like the sixth guy on a team or something. And I've not really done that with Batman. So I'm trying to figure out who my Batman is, has been an interesting, I know who my Superman is trying to figure out who my Batman is, has been a very interesting experience. Yeah. I mean, can you remember given the breadth of, of comic book characters that you've worked on a breadth, almost like nobody else, you know, right. uh, in, in the, in, in the contemporary era, what was your first exposure to both Batman and Superman? Uh, to Batman, it was specifically, it was Batman 180. It was the first comic that came out after the TV show hit in 1966 and first Batman comic or the second Batman comic. And it was, it, it just transformed me. That was it. it that started a path that has never, that has never ceased. Uh, my first exposure to Superman was in World's Finest Comics. It was uh, an issue not too long after that, uh, which sort of imprinted upon me, Kurt Swan, George Klein, Superman. That's, you know, that's the Superman that, that, that is close to my heart. Yeah. I mean, you're a man after my own heart. The, uh, I think my first Batman, it might be, it might not have the number bang on it. It might be 184. It's the one with uh, Batman and Robin covered in, in webs, and it's like for X amount of days. Right. 184. Yeah. So just a few months after. Yeah. 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 Right. Sadly, on, yeah. I know this stuff off. I can't only name yeah. 37 states, but I know numbers off the top of my head. <laughs> well, you and me both, because it was all my first exposure while digging the TV show. So uh sure. yeah, I've got a great love of, and those those covers in that in that run are fantastic, yeah. actually. Loads of great really stuff. Are. Yeah, they really are. So what can we look forward to with your iteration of Batman Superman World's Finest? The the remit given to me by editorial was give us the classic versions of these characters, not necessarily not silver age per se, or not any specific era in publishing history, but just Batman, Batcave, Alfred, Robin, you know, Superman, Daily Planet, Secret Identity, you know, all the, the you know, trunks, all the things that, that we think of when we think of these characters with a, with the intent of, of not trying to make it, look in any way old-fashioned and it doesn't with Dan Mora drawing it it looks very yeah. contemporary but just with the idea of being able to then do protracted story arcs that don't have to hinge on where this where Batman is at this exact moment in Batman and Detective yeah. Comics or whether Superman is off world or here or there so it's it's a team up of I, I keep saying two but it's really not it's it's Superman Batman and Robin yeah I found to my stunned surprise as I was writing the book that having Robin be an equal partner in the book and in the team made all the difference. First off, it makes it different than any of the other Batman Superman books that DC has published over the last, you know, 10, 15 years. It makes it unique in that sense. And secondly, just having Dick Grayson around as someone who can make the jokes, as someone who can, you know, be sarcastic or whatever, that, that having that comedic voice on stage that doesn't belong to Batman or Superman just makes it so much more fun to write. Yeah, that that is so interesting because the the classic era, of course, of World's Finest that that was your first exposure. That Robin's very much a part of that. Yeah, mix. absolutely, yes, absolutely is integral to those stories. Yeah, 
So it's, it's, it's that. The other thing that's been super exciting is I, I sat down and I said, okay, what, what do I want to see that I've never seen with these characters, which is why we have the Doom Patrol showing up in the first arc, because I, no one has ever seen the Batman and, and Doom Patrol together. We've seen Superman and, and sort of a later version of the Doom Patrol in one comic 30 years ago, but that's just not a combination we see. Um, with a second issue, we bring Supergirl in. And the reason for that, and more than anything else, there's a plot reason, but the real reason is because I realized that in 80 years of Robin and you know 60 years of Supergirl, they've never had a conversation. We have never once seen in any comic that I can recall, seen the two of them interact with each other. They've been in the same story, but not having a conversation, interacting with each other. What is their relationship? And that's what we're trying to hammer home constantly in this book is let's show you the DC universe from an angle you're not used to seeing it from. Yeah. I, I, I am so all in on this book, mate, because it's a real joy to hear you say that. I guess as a lifelong DC fan, as a lifelong fan of that universe, guys like me, uh, any long-term fans, irrespective of age, women, men, whoever, what right. you really want to hear are those are those joyous gaps being filled in. I think there's a, a great joy, no doubt, as a writer, but as a fan, as well as a reader, to sit yeah. there and luxuriate with those moments, I think is a beautiful thing. That's That's a lot of fun. The other part of it that is also not exactly fun, but interesting to me, is the villain in the sense that we are creating a villain that is not, how do I put this? Uh, you know, when you do big crossover events, you introduce a new villain and I, I like to call them wedding dresses because the villain is introduced and then nobody ever uses them again. Um, this guy is designed not to be that. This, this is, we're introducing a villain who we will find out has very integral and important ties to something in the Batman mythos. And then we will see him again in present day DC before the end of the year. Really so that makes the story not just a fun story, but the world's fine. It's not just a fun story, but also integral to something that's going to happen big in the DCU. But to be, be clear, created by you for World's Finest, and that's exactly. where we'll see this film well, by, first. Yeah. by me and Dan Mora. I can't give yeah. him enough props. He is, he is such an incredible artist. There is such vitality to his work, and it's a, it's a beautiful... There are times, this is the real tell with Dan that makes him great, is there are times when I am asking him to draw characters that I know look corny and could very easily look very old fashioned. And instead he draws them like they need to be drawn, but he just does it in such a style that they don't look old fashioned. They don't look non-contemporary. His, you know, his Dr. Alchemy, his mirror master, they look really awesome, but they look like they're supposed to look. Yeah. That, that I mean, that's, a, that's a great quality to have. I think that, propulsivity the propulsity of his work is great you know the movement that he has and, and tied with character such a such a great thing to see what is your take mark on um on clark kent on bruce wayne what what's your kind of you know ideal version of those characters my ideal version of these characters is that they're friends is that i and that they're best friends it's doesn't mean they can't have differences it doesn't mean they can't you know, and Batman is very keen in my book to continue pointing out all the differences they have just because that's Batman. He's more of a cynic, but it's, I can understand why people write them as enemies. I can understand why people write them as, as diametrically opposed. That's a valid interpretation, but my, but the interpretation you don't see very often these days is the two of them as best friends. And so I wanted to run to that because it's not something we see very often. I love it. And, and, you know, tremendously resonant when it comes to comics history, because that's how they were portrayed for so many decades. Right. Yeah. I, and I think a fight, but to find a no doubt contemporaneous way to do that and to have it feel real, that's something I'm really looking forward to, mate. It's funny. I was writing an issue yesterday and I was almost done with it. And I, it felt like something was missing. And it took me a couple of days to figure out what that was. And I realized that in that one issue, I've done, you know, this is, I think, issue three I was working on. In the previous couple of issues, I'd had a lot of fun with those just those quiet moments every once in a while where characters just talk about what it feels like to be who they are. And I didn't have that in this, in this story. I had Superman and Batman together, but 
I didn't have a, them just have a moment of conversation talking about what it's like to have magic in the DC universe that Superman is vulnerable to. And that just something like that, or why they hang out with each other, what, yeah. you know, and that's, so that's a huge important part of this to me is, is the interaction moments. Yeah. Right. I, 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 I can't wait to see how you handle it. And, and, and to close off on who else have you got ambitions of bringing into the title in the same way that you're talking about you know, the Robin Supergirl race? What, what else have you got? There is a huge list. There is an enormous list uh, that I made up, but I do know that I've never seen the Bizarro Man Bat team. I think that's a <laughs> yeah. that's certainly on deck at some point. Uh, and beyond that, I'm not trying to dodge the question. It's just that the answer would take me too long because there are yeah. just so many characters that metamorpho you don't get to see very much of anymore and i i want to i have a take you know this is the thing about being a dc fan all my life is i have a take on all of these characters you may not like the take you may not agree with the take but i have a very definite take on all these characters and i want to show you what the take is yeah well well i i i just can't wait and the first opportunity people watching this are gonna have to uh to grab hold of that is batman superman world's finest issue one we've got a range of beautiful alternative covers for that issue which you can order from the links attached to our conversation let me let me mention one more thing that oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't think we've messaged out yet but is important uh as a special bonus because the reception of the book has been so strong because the orders have been so strong dc has actually taken all the ads out of the book and instead has, is going to run that detective comics 10 pager as a prologue for those who missed it but it's also, but if you didn't miss it, you're not paying for extra pages. You're just paying for pages that were going to be ad pages. So no increase in price, just a special bonus. Uh, that is a fantastic and be very well said, Mark. That's wonderful. Hey. Great to hear. And, uh, and again, can be ordered from links attached to our conversation. It is really lovely to chat with you about this. And I could fill up an, an hour of my time, <laughs> days of my time having this conversation with you. So uh, uh, come back and see us again, Mark. I look forward to chatting with you again, mate. Take care. Okay. Take care. Bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.